This there conference will now be recorded. <laughs> okay, so starting in the auto build tool. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is going to show at a, at a macro when you're setting up payment plans. Um, you know, the, the, you'll see them here. You'll see a summary of what the plans are. Um, and then you'll also be able to, as people sign up, uh, see who's enrolled. Um, there are some tools on the roadmap to even add more graphics here, but you're getting the data you need from the auto build tool. But there's also, that'll also apply when you're seeing people in real time on the user management panel. Um, I'm, I'm here for a couple of reasons. One, I just want to walk through a couple quick examples of the different types of plan options. And then I also want to talk about um, you know, how many plans should you have in your registration flow. Um, so here, um, I actually created a new one that's going to be you know, more specific to the time frame that we have um, for the fall, um, since this is a project that I built out for examples across this year. Um, but there's kind of a, a uh, it, it definitely in terms of the number of plans you have, it depends on what types of options you have. Um, definitely, it's good to have maybe two or three, so that way you have a, a variety of different plan options if you're going to offer auto bill plans. So why does auto bill help? How does it work? Um, basically, as soon as anybody makes a payment in RegPack, um, we're able to then save that payment method so that way they don't have to pay in full. Um, but you also don't have to, to track them down to close their balance. They'll, get, they'll see if they're signing up for an installment plan that they're going to be paying over time, what dates those installments are gonna be charged, and the system's going to charge them automatically. Um, so the pay in full plan is obviously very, very self-explanatory. Another really common thing that a lot of our clients want to be able to set up is a deposit now and then a balance right before your program starts. Um, so instead of having regular installments, uh, how do we set that up? So I'll actually walk that through that step. That's something where um, once you know where to set it up, it's very easy, but it's just a matter of making sure you're hitting the right steps. So if I create a plan, deposit, plus balance in this part, of course, up to you. And uh, entire order or selected products also depends on you know the different plans you're gonna be offering, how you want it to apply, how you also want it to calculate slash uh, allocate uh, funds as they're getting charged. For this example, we'll keep it very straightforward, make it apply to the entire order. Um, the only thing you gotta uh, put in here is gonna be an end date. Let's say, let's say we're signing up for actually 2023, like maybe a summertime program. Um, we want to get everybody paid in full by the end of May. Let's do that as an example. Um, and we do want to have an initial deposit. Let's put that deposit as, we'll say, $100. Again, that's going to be up to you. The piece that I want to focus on here for deposit plus balance is instead of doing one of the sort of default regular installments like you know monthly uh, bi-weekly so on and so forth we're actually going to hit custom so the other options here that we have um, this is going to make sure that it's you know month monthly or bi-weekly those those options that you're seeing here it's going to keep people up to date keep them on regular installments and it's always going to calculate, you know, to optimize that uh, even distribution of payments. So if they fall behind or if you're adding another payment, it's going to show what that next installment is as well as their whole balance. And Autobill sort of automatically recalculates to make sure that they're going to stay on time. The custom date is going to keep things a little bit more simple, um, but it allows you that flexibility. In fact, right off the bat, it shows me a deposit and the balance. And you could just leave it at that. If you wanted to pick a different date, you can edit this date. You can also add custom units um, based on how much you want to have collected and the date that you want to have it collected, whether that's a dollar amount or a percentage. Um, I'll leave it at that. We'll, we'll keep it here. We've got this payment schedule, exactly what I said it was going to be, deposit plus balance. Um, if anybody has questions, definitely feel free to chat them uh, to us or, or hop in. Um, but uh, a couple other things that I want to touch on when it comes to um, auto bill. Actually, I think I think that's sort of the main the main pieces. We've got the custom plans, the number of plans that we want to offer. Um, again, that does depend a little bit on your needs. Um, but in terms of uh, the plans that we're offering in the setup, I think we can then take a look at what it looks like when people are actually actually enrolled. So, we've just shown like what plans look like as we're setting them up. 
Um, but that doesn't necessarily give us an idea of what it's actually going to look like while you're reporting on audible plans, as well as when you have people uh, or on the parent side when they're signed up for an audible plan. Um, so from the back end, we can actually take a look at who is already on an autobill plan. We've already got this quick filter here. If I zoom in, everybody can see it. Um, there we go. On autobill. So that what that means is if I click this, it'll show only the uh, the uh, families uh, and campers in this example uh, in the group who have a payment plan in the cart. If I want to focus on just the specific orders who have on a group system, we'll just click here, of course. Um, and then let's take a look at an example who is somebody who's already started the payment plan. So if I click on actually the balance here, it'll automatically take me to Connor Test's uh, auto bill plan. We can see that that deposit that's due uh, today was completed and that these are the installments that are going to be remaining. Um, so the that's what it looks like on your end. Uh, these are people who are already on auto bill, but there are a couple other things that you can take a look at. If you're wanting to keep track of auto bill, um, there are tools such as I'll show one example of I think something that's very helpful because uh, sometimes people either need to update their payment method or they didn't save their payment method or whatever the case may be. You need to be able to keep track of people who signed up for a plan but may have fallen behind. Um, so let's take a look at that. So I don't know if we have examples in this specific project, but I want to show the filter specifically. Um, if we have somebody who has a payment that's overdue. Um, there are a couple different filter options here. If you have specific questions about them, definitely let me know. But I want to highlight this tool because this is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to let's track anybody who still owes a payment that is overdue on their plan. Perfect. We've got some um, an example right here. There's a payment plan that they haven't made their installment that's due uh, actually last year, November uh, 2021, when I first created this project. So a good example there. And this sort of and this is going to show everybody in the project who's on a payment plan right now and has the payment overdue. They've missed an installment. So that is an easy tool you can use to either run a report or then email this exact group of people. This is what you owe. Um, we could actually potentially jump around to um what your know, e options are for email. Um Tina, if that makes sense or um I can also talk about what it looks like on the parent end first. I would say parent end and kind of just to be conscientious of time and ensuring we're getting all of our, our components in, we probably want to move on to, uh, to abandoned cards. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is a good transition, actually. Um, we've talked before on the desk side chats to, uh, about specifically setting up the cart timer. Um, I actually think we have somebody who's on the timer right now. Um, that's what it looks like when somebody had only 15 minutes to pay and at the beginning of the call set somebody up and they need to close their balance. Um, when you see somebody who has missed that time window, if you do have the cart timer set up, um, we have the tools here in terms of keeping track of those as well. So if uh, the Mario and Luigi test uh, hadn't made their payment, um, what happens is they'll turn into um, people who have uh, uh, abandoned their cart. So if you're setting up a cart timer, that's a tool to make sure that they are only taking up a spot if they paid for it, but you're still giving them a little bit of time to make that payment um, so that they can secure their spot. So uh, actually in the case of these two, we can actually make a payment on the whole family. They're both on a payment plan, so we'll just add in that deposit. Um, perfect. But for those who didn't, we've already got a couple that we want to keep track of. Um, and there are some quick ways to look at that as well. So that's specifically, you can see the total amount of abandoned products here. You'll also be able to see here um, by looking at uh, the cart itself when an item is abandoned. If we want to take a look at people who maybe expressed interest but didn't make that payment, um, you can actually take a look at that through uh, through looking at specific products or looking at uh, the product status itself. So if, for example, I wanted to take a look at just people who've signed up for um, this intermediate program, um, but have not made a payment and it's marked as abandoned, it'll filter for that group specifically. So if we have groups that we want to look at the who hasn't paid where, um, you'll be able to do that. And then again, use that as a tool to follow up with them. Hey, you are interested in this specific program. Uh, do you still want to sign up? 
That's, there's still some spots available. Come in and make your deposit to save your spot. So that's where that abandoned filter tool is very helpful. Um, okay. Uh, there are a couple other things that we wanted to uh, touch on. Um, Dina, were there, was there anything in terms of the, the feedback that we got that was talking about um, you know, payment uh, types and things like that? Absolutely. So I think though we really did touch on the major pieces, the one thing that I do want to make sure, Connor, that we do touch on as well is the recommended amount or sort of what the capacity should potentially be for those auto bill plans. Because right, inevitably, sometimes you get a little excited about all the auto bill opportunities and you design 30 plans and that can be a little overwhelming for your clients. So do you want to talk about, about that a little bit? Uh, sure. Yeah. It's something that I had touched about, uh, about, but I think you're right. And there's also some things that you can do if you have specific plans that should apply to specific people that'll help make it so that, um, cause what we don't want to do is like when, when somebody's selecting a payment plan, they'll see all the installments that's going to be calculated for them. And you really only want to give them a couple of choices so that they're not overanalyzing how they're going to pay. They're making a decision based on whether they want installments, uh, regularly or not basically, and then proceeding from there. Um, but if you do have specific plans, for example, for specific programs or, or things like that, you can still set those up. Um, definitely in terms of what the applicant should be seeing, I'd recommend to leave that to maybe three, um, three or four. Um, you've got a pay in full option, you've got a deposit and balance, and then some sort of regular installment is sort of usually best practices. In terms of making options that are specific, um, for, you know, in order to take advantage of the different tools, but making sure that people are seeing options that apply to them, there's a couple of ways to control that. One would be a trigger, like sh only show the plan as an option if they're applying for a specific program or meet certain criteria, like for example, if you're giving them a scholarship or something like that, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to make that plan uh, product specific. So if I were to look at um, plan settings specifically, I can make a plan only apply to certain products. So that way they'll see that and they'll only be paying for that plan if they have ordered that product. Um, so that's sort of ways to be able to take advantage of the different tools. But again, definitely maybe three is, is that sweet spot um, in terms of how many plans you'd show to an applicant on the front end. And they're, they're selecting those plans through their form flow. So be just being conscientious of that and making sure that there's a lot of great flexibility, which does help increase the amount of people who are going to make that deposit when they know that they don't have to pay in advance. But the flip side of that is if you give them too many options and then it sort of slows down that conversion process. Absolutely. Sweet. I think, Connor, next on our agenda is actually one of the things that sets RegPark, uh, RegPack apart from a lot of different vendors and providers in registration and processing. And talk a little bit about 24-hour cancellation and, and what, what that actually means. Yeah. Um, so uh, when, when you're keeping track of payments, um, and I'll, I'll just touch on this briefly. Um, so uh, issuing, you know, in terms of keeping track, if somebody needs to make a change to their payment or uh, for example, if they've paid more than uh, like they want to switch to a different program that, that costs less or you've given them a discount after the fact, you've got a couple of different options to make sure that you're, um, you know, collecting the right amount here. So if I were just to take a look at somebody who's paid a while back, I'll see the default, um, let's see, options to issue a refund, um, but the uh, yeah, there we go. But for somebody who has not, um, uh, who's made a payment within the past 24 hours, um, and this is for if your merchant account uh, that we've set up for you is through BlueSnap, you can always double check with our payments team. You can just click here on the help button, double check with payments to see who your merchant account provider is. But you'll also be able to see if you do have BlueSnap um, that they, uh, you do have the ability to cancel a payment. So this is a button that's available within the first 24 hours. Um, what happens with the BlueSnap accounts is it'll authorize that transaction. This is a tool that we've built out specifically for uh, people who have this need. Um, and that way also if somebody, for example, is in the middle of a payment plan, they got a new card or they wanna not use the card that they used to make their deposit and they sort of forgot about it and they reach out, oh my gosh, I just got charged on this card. I need to be able to change my payment method. Can I do that? You can just go in, hit cancel the payment and it'll show on your end just like a refund um, but the benefit here is it's not going to show 
um, on there. And it'll just be as if on their, on their card statement, it'll just take that transaction out. And that way, if we go back to, let's go ahead and refresh here. Yep, we go back to Luigi. We can now update with a new, we can see that it's been canceled and we can update with a new payment method. Um, you can remove the one that exists or just add a new one, whichever makes more sense based on uh, you know, the client's needs. Um, and yeah, that is something very specific. In fact, that's why it's only BlueSnap accounts is because a lot of the uh, providers out there can't uh, ac accommodate that as easily. Um, but this is something we built out to make that really easy to be flexible with your payment plans, still keep people on track, um, so on and so forth. Um, okay. I think we should definitely, with, with with timing in mind, I think one of the things that is, uh, especially based on the resources we already have available in RegPack, I think very unique, and, and Dean has created some really great examples for us, which is the ability to create um, invoices and what it looks like in terms of the communication once somebody has made a payment or if you're trying to get them to make a payment. Um, first of all, let's just talk about the receipts that are already going out. Um, without having to create your own custom templates, the system is already going to send out uh, a receipt. Um, this is just the, the general one that includes um, some of the tools that are actually available to you in RegPack. It's going to have like information about the order, going to be uh, the payment history. These are tokens that you can include in any email, but this is again automatically going out anytime a transaction happens. Um, so they get a notice when that payment is made and if you've canceled that payment. Um, same goes for refunds and things like that. Um, what I, and so it's, that's automatically going out. Um, what you do also have available is the ability to uh, add in your own uh, email. So a good use for emails, uh, well, there's a lot of use, but when it comes to transactions specifically, um, the only case where I would add another con confirmation email is if you're going to um, have it specific to information that you're sending out once about your program as a whole, uh, send that out automatically at the same time that they get that receipt. Um, or if you wanna be able to have something specific to your um, your program as each receipt's coming out, um, or uh, if you're sending out an invoice for them to go back in and pay. So let's actually look at just a uh, payment made confirmation first. This is just a default. This is included in your template already pre-set up with some of the main, uh, what we call tokens again, um, in an email. So there's lots of resources about email management. Won't spend too much time here. This is the same type of information that's on that uh, receipt that I just showed a preview of. Um, but, uh, and then again, you can, if you want to set something up that's in addition to the receipt, you can use that tool. Um, when it comes to creating a invoice, um, this is also something where if you're using their order history, you can you can send that out to them uh, as well in advance to make sure that they know when to pay uh, and that sort of thing. Um, I'll actually show just a preview of what they look like, and then I'll switch back over here and let Dina talk about the setup since um, she built these out and, and they're really impressive to me. Um, so here's one that just shows an example of how you can use the RegPack uh, email template tool to obviously create that structure, but also even add a logo uh, where you're adding that in to match the uh, formatting as well. Um, I'm just, th these are just examples where uh, she sent them over to me and I'm downloading them as a PDF, but this is sort of that email format where you're seeing that. Uh, here's another one. Uh, without the logo, it's a little bit more straightforward, but also you're able to see that same invoice structure. We've got information that's using those tokens, using those orders, and then making sure that they know what they need to pay. Um, okay, so let's go into how that's how that works um, a little bit. For yeah, Dean, do you want to jump in here? No, say, Connor, that was great. Thank you. I mean, I think, and this is one of those things that. It comes with RegPack's ability to allow you to edit at whatever capacity you want to challenge yourself to. So if you are interested in learning some HTML coding, these are some great tools that you can do. Um, if you like this template, we can always share it with you as well, and you can customize it and make adjustments from there. We can send you tools on how that work as well. But basically, Connor, can you do me a favor? Uh, basically, the way emails work is in most of the coding in our systems is you'll see what we call sort of the, the tailored view. And then there's a coding view, and it's called source code. So when you go to the bottom of your email page, you'll be able to see where it says source code. And this is the code that goes into building it. So this is what you're telling the computer to show. But in this, 
we can tailor colors. We can tailor, do you want a dotted line around where it says billing? Do you want a solid line around where it says billing? Do you want to add those logos? Do you want to add a professional signature? Do you want to add links to bring them back to their registration page? How do you want to orient it? And it also allows you, like any other email, to utilize tokens. So any token, any question that you've posed to your registrants through their process, you are able to include in this email including a unique ID. So sometimes, right, you want, you'll see here, right, it says uh, under invoice number, it's a head unit applicant ID. That's unique to the user and you can always search it in your system. And that number will always be linked to that user. So it's the same way of sort of adding an invoice number that's unique to that user and that invoice that you've distributed. So that's a way to do that. But again, any of the information that you have collected through your registration process can then be added to this invoice. Um, so as, as you know, Connor you know, showed you, you can add colors and logos and, and whatever you'd like to really customize it to reflect your business. But one of the things that we really wanna be able to give you the opportunity to do is when users go into your registration, we want it to feel like it's your business. We don't want them to feel like they've been taken out of your business and plopped somewhere else. So anything that we can do in our registration flow um, to make that happen for you, please never hesitate to reach out. We always have some great creative ideas to help you with that. Uh, and invoicing and this custom invoicing is one of the ways to do that. Um, one of the other things that uh, just keep in mind that your users will get as a payment confirmation from WePay, if WePay is your processor, WePay will also send them just a X amount of dollars has been paid to this account. So know that in that, you know, as Connor showed you, you do have the opportunity to set up a payment confirmation email yourself as well, but know in the back of your mind that they are already getting one from WePay and they are already getting one that's generated from the system automatically. So keeping, you know, bearing in mind, what is your communication tactic with your clients? Do you want to overload them? What does that look like? And being strategic in that planning, which is why that's sort of the differential with an invoice. But this is not necessarily a payment receipt of thank you so much for paying, but more so you need to print something for your files or your records, right? You've made a donation and you need to show that you've made that payment. This will be able to give you all those details, for example, or like Connor mentioned, you've gone through and whether they didn't leave a payment on file or they have subsequently canceled that credit card and they owe you a little bit of money, this is a great way to go in there and send a more formal looking invoice along with some verbiage of saying, you know, thank you so much for registering. The programs will be starting in a week. Please make sure you've logged back in that system to remit payment while allowing you right step by step there'll be a link it'll show them exactly what they've registered exactly who's registered for what what they need to pay what they've paid to date um, and again any other fields that you want to include as well i think connor that that wraps up this portion i think cuts us to, to the two o'clock mark which, which keeps on time i think open up for any any q a anything else you want to add at this point yeah um just one one final note just to clarify what we're looking at here um because we talked about a lot of different tools that we're incorporating to get this um look on the email um the like the text that, that you have that's here um, you'll still have all of the regular text editing tools to set that up as needed and then again the information that you're included this is the same way that any email um uh, setup works any template where you're getting those tokens information that you're collecting or that's generated about each user and then just plop it in to use that mail merge tool when you're sending it out to the applicant so and if you're looking for something specific, you can always search for it. Like I just hit ID, and then I've got these ID types um, that generate just a, a number for each applicant. That's automatic. Um, and Connor, just because just I'm getting some of them in already, people are asking for that for that template. Uh, 100%, I'm going to put my email in the chat. You guys are more than welcome to reach out to me, and we can set you up with that basic template. I'll give you the code, and happy to give you some resources if you want to play around to try to adjust those colors. And there, there are great tools on the web that we've sort of compiled. Of course, Google there's a million things out there we are not the experts in this per se but we want to share our knowledge base with you to help amplify your client experience so i'm going to put my email in the chat here and feel free to, to reach out to me if you're interested in that code guys awesome yeah and uh that's that's really all i wanted to just clarify in terms of what's already available and uh the HTML, html styling is designed to sort of add in that um yeah, you, know, you know, in terms of in terms of the bordering and things like that, the formatting tools like the coloring that you saw there. Um, but any of that information, you can still use the right. You don't have to be a um, uh, a coder to 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 sort that out. No, and and I think it's also cool to mention as well that yes, you can use it in the invoice tablet, but you can also use it in so very many different places in your registration. 
If you, I've worked with clients who've added little gifts, right? I have a client who's their, their logo of sorts is a unicorn. So halfway through their registration process, cause it's a little cumbersome, a unicorn page pops up. It's a dancing unicorn saying you're almost there. Keep going. So right, there are all these little things that, you know, not saying that it, that is for everyone. I certainly think it's, it's sort of unique to his business, but there are these opportunities to really customize and tailor a little bit. If you challenge yourself to learn a little bit and dig a little bit. So know that that's always there as an option and things like adding gifts and, and images, uh, there's an article in the help center that we can send out to you guys as well that shows you step by step how to do that. That's a pretty simple process as well. Yep. There are um, well off the, off the top of my head, there are a handful of places where that um, that source code button is available for you to add those things, like an image or or an animation, um, or or just you know stylize the color in the background and the form. Um, obviously, the one place is the email. Also, the uh, it within forms. Uh, there's the uh, open text uh, field, um, and then within the products themselves, the ability under the description, you can also add things. So some things that some people will do. Some of the uh, clients that I've worked with is create an image that's connected to the description of the product that people are ordering. So to really create that sort of catalog feel, it's something that you have available as well. So those are the sort of the main places where. Um, if you want to get more fancy with in terms of the styling, you have that ability to just do it right there. So then, Connor, we, we turn it to you guys, right? Any questions, anything that we can clarify, anything that we can talk a little bit further? Of course, if there are individual questions, support team is here for you guys. You're happy to, to sort of reach out to us. We're happy to assist here. But any, any questions for the for the general general group while we have you? Let's do um, one thing in case people want to, well, maybe we'll hang out for five, 10 minutes, um, but just a couple of, I guess, housekeeping options if anybody doesn't have questions and wants to hop off. Um, so uh, as we've promoted this uh, desk side chat, this is something where um, we're on a bit of a hiatus during the summer uh, as people are, there's a time of year with a lot of shifting needs in terms of reporting as well as planning for uh, 2023 now. Um, so we will be uh, making these uh, more regular again, monthly uh, desk side chats. Um, definitely lot, lots more information uh, to come uh, uh, about the next one. Um, and in addition, we'll also be making sure that those recordings are back up and live, um, starting with this one as well. Um, so uh, we'll make sure to have all that information sent out to, of course, everybody that's here and everybody that's um, you know signed up on in, interested in the desk side chats. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, Anything else that we want to add, Dina, and we'll open it up for questions? I think that's great. I think the only teaser that I would throw in there is that starting next month, we're going to be doing quizzes at the end. And our hope is that our last session of the year is going to be a quiz session where you guys come, you take your RegTech knowledge base, you bring it on, game on, and we're going to have some great prizes, uh, including some potential discounts yeah. and things that we'll be offering you at the end of the year. So if you feel like you are a skilled RegPack individual, you are learning, you are attending our, our Desi chats, we encourage you come have some fun. It'll be around the holiday time. Take a take a 30 minute break with us, 20 minute break with us. And best case, you, you know, you win a little bit of something and you get some laughs and some smiles. And worst case scenario, you get some laughs and smiles and you learn with us, too. So <laughs> just a, li a little a little teaser that's coming down the pipeline as well. Okay, cool. So I'll pause the recording.